Hello, I'm Davina, and uh, hello to all of you bold, beautiful, brilliant, and highly evolved souls. I'm going to talk today about the abandonment, wound, and grief. And abandonment occurs when a parent abandons their child either physically or emotionally. And of course, if you have a narcissistic parent, then emotional abuse is pretty much an ongoing constant thing when you are a child because they cannot connect to you on an emotional level. They have no ability to empathize or attune with you. Um, and so, um, you know, there are just numerous, like endless abandonment wounds ongoing throughout childhood. Um, that really is just absolutely devastating to a child. Um, and this is, you know, this is the, this is really the, the core of, of all, of all trauma and abuse is, is the abandonment wound and the shame that accompanies that. Um, because the child feels then, of course, that they are being rejected, that, you know, their parent is not, accepting them as they are their child you know a parent is either you know maybe dismissing their feelings shaming them um you know in some way um showing their child that you know you're not acceptable as you are i don't like you like this um and the child learns to then mold and, and change themselves into a false self that that is acceptable to their parent um and um, they they have to fawn their parents in order for survival. Um, the the child is is very aware that that they depend on this parent, and um, you know, for small children especially, and uh, and I see it as as a nanny, and more and more I see how you know the child is incredibly vulnerable, incredibly defenseless. And that a parent has a lot of power and control and um, and they can abuse that power. And narcissists definitely do. I'm kind of going to flip around here. Um, so, um, yeah, the child knows instinctively that they would not survive without this this parent's care and and, and some kind of support and um, and comfort. So this is how, obviously, how fawning begins. And so the abandonment wounds that we experience, and I believe all people have probably experienced some abandonment wounds from their childhood. Um, either, you know, whenever a parent has misattuned to a child, the child is going to sense a, a, a little bit of abandonment. And hopefully in a healthy parent, um, the help, the parent will be able to make amends with the child or, you know, try to repair that, um, if they're aware that they have, you know, done, done this kind of misattunement, um, or maybe they're also possibly, an, you know, maybe a healthy parent sometimes misses and they don't realize they don't have that awareness that they, you know, that they cause that kind of misattunement with the child. And if a parent is pretty decent and, um, sort of a good enough parent, then, um, you know, the child can still grow up to, to have that um, healthy attachment and, and grow up in a healthy way. But if you have a narcissist as, as a parent, then your whole childhood is basically one long abandonment, really. Um, and, and the feelings of abandonment uh, for a child are, you know, are, you know, are just so painful, so excruciatingly painful um, you know, the feelings of abandonment are the, the terror, you know, they, like, I, I feel like I'm going to die. And, and, um, I hear this from my inner child quite often, you know, I just keep validating that. Um, and shame is obviously a huge one, like just feelings of being worthless or despicable, unacceptable, um, uh, just, yeah, useless or, um, you know, ugly or whatever your parents sort of um, led you to believe that you were. Um, deep, deep grief and sadness. 
And, and this is a huge part of the abandonment because you can imagine as a child how um, these are your parents, this is your whole world. And if your parents aren't showing you that I love you as you are, um, that that's going to bring up so much grief, you know, like, <laughs> like not being loved as, you know, just for, for who you are, um, deep, deep sadness and grief. Also loneliness, um, anger and rage, um, depression, um, exhaustion, dissociation, um, hopelessness, and sometimes just utter despair and feeling like, I feel like I want to die. And I've heard that from my inner child as well, that she is in such, um, in that place of darkness and despair, that that's how she felt um, um, those many, you know, decades ago. And again, just, just validating that as scary as that is to hear those things coming from yourself, you know. Um, and um what I've also discovered is, is really seeing this experience from, from your inner child's viewpoint, from their eyes. Um, and, and being, being a nanny to children has been a tremendous gift for me in order to, to, to really start seeing things from a child's point of view. Um, you know, like any kind of, of, of separation, um, can bring up these feelings. So, if you experience any kind of loss in your life, whether it be, you know, maybe a, just a small loss, it could be just, well, not no loss is small, but, um, you know, um, I'm just trying to think of something that would be small, but, but, you know, if you lose a friendship or if you um, have a divorce or if you lose a job, all of these things are going to bring up all of these stuff from your childhood, all this abandonment stuff is going to resurface. Um, and um, one thing, you know, that I noticed when, you know, when I left my husband was that whenever I went into a store, there was this song playing, like, I can't live without you. What is that? I can't, I can't remember how the song goes, but all these like sad love songs. It seemed like well, I, went, I went to the drugstore, like, you know, grocery store and all these sad love songs were playing all the time. And so it's just like, I don't know how to explain it, but it's like my subconscious is sort of projecting onto, um, I don't know, or if it's my, like, I don't know, music has been a very powerful way for me to communicate um, and to find out how my inner child is is feeling. Um, and I've just found out that I've I've lost the, the job that I've had for the last eight months. They're going to put her in into daycare in the fall. And um, I was taking her out for a stroll. And um, I'm passing by these workers outside and the song that's blaring is hit the road, Jack, <laughs> you know, and don't you come back no more, no more. And um, it was like, it's just, it's almost surreal, really, these, these kind of experiences. But this is, this is, again, this is my, my subconscious, my inner child's um, experience, like, even though, of course, logically and intellectually, I know, okay, you know, that's, I'm a nanny, jobs come to an end, this happens, um, families go on to whatever, putting their child in daycare, preschool. Um, logically, I know this is not, you know, rejection, but to my inner child, she just goes into um, re-experiencing the rejection, the abandonment that she felt from um from her parents. And, and so it's deeply, deeply painful. Um, and um, yeah, so as I said, like any kind of loss can, can trigger these kind of, um, these kind of abandonment feelings. It's kind of like the, it's really the, this is what flashbacks are, is like all this abandonment stuff coming up to the surface. So anytime we we sense that kind of um, aband emotional abandonment in our lives, whether it's someone who's just not listening to us, you know, these are the small kind of abandonments. But the, then we have the bigger like losses where we're really like losing um, something or someone in our life. And and what I kind of see is that you know the trigger part, you know, for me, you know, losing this job and losing this little girl that I've been caring for. Um, you know, it's a very intimate connection to care for a baby or a toddler. 
Um, and um, so I think, you know, this grief that's coming up for me is like <clears throat> 20 20 percent of it or maybe 30 or maybe 40 but a smaller amount is about the present and about what's going on with losing this this girl and the family and um and the rest of it you know the 70 80 percent is about my past and <clears throat> what happened to me as a child and it all just kind of blends together and you know it's um yeah so um a lot of grief can start coming up and and grief can also be in layered in, in a sense that it can bring up other similar losses, you know, <clears throat> that you've had before that maybe haven't completely been grieved. So I can think of like other children that I've I've lost through, you know, losing my like, losing jobs that eventually come to an end. And um, and those feelings also start coming up. So it, this is just a really a huge conglomeration of of pain, really. Um, yeah. And I think, um, I think I kind of already went over this, but yeah, it's, it's really about the parent, you know, you have attunement and you have abandonment. Those are the kind of the, the opposites. So you either have, um, an attuned parent or an abandoning parent. And, and, um, and of course there's, you know, plenty of in-betweens, but, um, um, basically if you're tuning and, and validating, a child and, and loving them unconditionally, those three things, attuning, validating, loving them in, unconditionally, um, then the child is going to feel like, yeah, I'm accepted. I'm, I'm liked just for who I am. And, and then they don't, they don't have abandonment fears. Of course they, they don't experience, um, these kind of things. Um, but to, to someone who's had a nar narcissistic parent, um, yeah, it's deeply, deeply frightening, deeply sad, deeply painful to um, to go through this um, on a daily basis. And then, you know, as an adult, through our flashbacks, we are unfortunately um, um, needing to to re-experience these things in order to to heal all of these wounds and scars that are inside us. You know, um, every time our our caregiver um, or parent or whatever, um, you know, invalidated us or ignored us when we were crying or all of those, um, you know, like, it's just like having a, someone punch you or, or hit you or kick you. And all of those are like, those are the emotional wounds that we can't see. Um, of course, if you were physically beaten, you would have physical wounds, but these are the emotional wounds that are all over, you know, in our bodies, you know, um, um, I was having this dream of like flying scissors and all I could do is hunch over and curl up in a ball and hope that these flying scissors weren't, weren't going to hurt me. And, um, and that's kind of what we do as children too, is we go into, you know, a fawn and a freeze mode and, um, and, and kind of hope that, um, we're not going to get hurt or at least we can try to try to reduce the amount of abuse as much as possible to just try to get through it. Um, and that's all that you can really do when you have narcissistic parents is just survive it, just get through it. And that's what you did because you're here. Um, so you're amazing because you survived it. And um, what else is going to have a whole lot of things to say? Um, feelings of hunger, I believe, are also um, definitely intertwined with this feeling of um emotional hunger you know this you know we never got fed emotionally we never were nourished emotionally so it's easy to um you know have this feeling of of hunger i believe P pete walker talks about this um, um kind of hunger that's tied into the abandonment wound um and addictions also can come from this not only were our parents intermittently you know reinforcing um, you know, abuse and then care and abuse and care, but also um, just, you know, we just naturally wanted to like avoid these excruciatingly painful uh, feelings and try to fill the void. You know, that's what, you know, addictions are, you know, avoid and fill the void. <laughs> Maybe that's a good way of saying it. Um, 
So, you know, yeah, overeating, undereating, substance abuse, shopping, overspending, gambling, all those kind of process kind of addictions and substance addictions um, are an attempt to somehow um, fill a need. Um, so if you have any of those, you know, be very gentle with yourself. Um, and in general, um, to heal this abandonment wound is to um, is to give ourselves that attunement that our parents didn't give us the the attunement, the unconditional love and the validation. I think those are like sort of, and then of course the empathy, empathy and compassion. I think, well, there's, I guess there's lots, but I guess with unconditional love comes um, also empathy and compassion. So, um, you know, phrases, you know, that you can use, like, I hear you, I hear your pain. And, you know, you know, I use my inner child's name, which is Donna, because that was my given name. Um, and I've changed my name which I think is a powerful thing to do, just as a side note. But I say, like, I hear you, Donna. I hear your pain. I know it's so scary. Um, I'm here for you. Um, you know, you can say, I'm not going to leave you. That that means a lot. Um, I love you just as you are. I love you even when you're feeling sad, when you're feeling tired, when you're feeling ashamed. Um and um, you can sing a love song to your inner child. And the one that's been kind of going through my head today is um, one that I've I've leaned on sometimes is um, I want to sing you a love song. I want to rock you in my arms all night long. I want to get to know you. I want to show you the peaceful feeling in my home. And so, yeah, these kind of things, um, hold yourself, hug yourself, rock yourself, stay warm, stay cozy and comfortable. These are things that the, you know, the child loves, you know, they want to be cozy. I remember I had a child that would say, I want to be cozy. He would say it was just so it's, it's the adorable thing. Um, and be just so gentle with yourself if you're going through some kind of loss or you've had a tr really painful trigger, um, because these are all that, that brings up all this abandonment stuff. Um, and and uh, yeah, and unfortunately, as I said, the I think the only way to heal the, these abandonment things is to re-experience them, which is why healing is so freaking hellish. Um, and just know that it's it's inevitable. If you have the wound inside you, then inevitably somehow your subconscious is going to create that reality for you so that you can heal it. And, um, you know, as much as this sucks, this really, really, really beyond sucks, um, the only way out is through, through the pain, feeling the pain, uh, feeling the grief. Um, and... Um, and, and releasing them so that little bit by little bit, the, the amount of, of, you know, of, um, em emotional pain that's there just goes, a, is just gradually, very gradually, little by little reduced, you know? And so if you have 10,000 wounds, you can imagine how long that takes to get through all these little, um, these wounds. And I don't know exactly how healing works. I think it's, you know, I don't think you have to maybe go through each single thing that happened to you in childhood, but you know, um, the main pain, um, yeah, it's, it's a long and, um, painful process and, um, yeah, just keep sticking to it. And, um, I don't know, I don't have any like, <laughs> wonderful words of um encouragement it's it's just um yeah i'm just sending you um my compassion and all of my my empathy to you and what you're going through and um yeah i'm wishing you many many blessings on your journey of healing and awakening and i'm davina of boldness blooming <laughs>